Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Today we're going to be uh, making the, the ball control that we have a little bit more interesting. We're not going to add a whole lot just yet, but we are going to make it a little bit more interactive. Um, so anyways, let's just jump right in. So the last time we had gone in, let's load up the level here, and we set it up so that when we click the button the ball would actually have a force applied and it would go somewhere so there we see it just falls off the edge of that platform alright so first thing I want to do is uh, since we're gonna make this a little more interesting let's go ahead and I'm gonna hold my alt key down and I'm gonna hold down the right click and I'm gonna pan up so that it zooms out and then I'm going to go ahead and select the platform that we have here and I'm going to scale it up so we get something that's a little bit bigger. Uh, you know what, let's not go with something that's that big. Let's go up maybe five times in each direction. Um, and then let's move it in the z-axis, let's move it so we're kind of on the edge of the platform. So let's go with uh, negative five maybe let's see where that goes no nope, not far enough negative let's go negative uh, 20 there we go that looks a little bit better so I'm gonna middle mouse click on the middle mouse button and I'm gonna just pan up just a little bit so we get a better angle alright so let's go to scene let's save it now we have a little bit more to work with if we hit play and we click our button then the ball will instead of dropping off the edge of the platform it's going to go a little bit further of course eventually it will drop but we're going to change that so the first thing let's um, let's go ahead and open the the scene back up and let's click on the ball now I want to go over to the dynamics um, there's some interesting settings in the dynamics that we can adjust that's going to um, make this a little bit better for us so it doesn't just run off the edge of the scene here because um, what we want is eventually when you fire the ball and it does, you know, bounces off some things and it comes to rest on the ground, we don't want it to roll forever. We want some kind of um, some dampening and things like that so that it, it'll slow down and come to a stop. And then once it comes to a stop, then that's when we'll know that we can reset back to the beginning of the level and um, get ready for another try. So I went through in the dynamics and adjusted some of these settings. So one thing that we want to do is um, we're going to turn on the auto idle and what that does is when it gets when the movement gets below a certain level um, it's going to actually put that object into idle mode which means that it just com comes completely to a rest so it's almost like a little break that we apply um, now I don't know 100% how these values work I've been playing around with them and, and what I do is I just kind of play with them for a little bit until I get exactly the look that I'm looking for you know the way I want it to be and so um, what I did is I had already gone through and, and done some testing on this what I came up with was 0 0.5 for the linear threshold um, I went ahead and put the angular threshold up originally but I think I'm gonna leave it down at, at this value because I'm not too worried about the angu angular threshold is the rotation of the ball I don't really care too much about that. What I'm really worried about is um, the linear distance that the ball is rolling. I want it to come to rest if it's not moving very far. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as it was. And then the time, I'll leave that as it was too. So we're basically working with the linear threshold. Now on the dampening, um, I'm going to set the... linear dampening you know what I actually did this with the angular one before but now I'm thinking maybe we'll play around with it and see how this works in linear so I had set it to one on angular but since I'm kind of changing gears and going for linear let's set it at one here and let's see what happens so what we should see is um, we're gonna want to see that this ball once we give it some force it's going to roll and at some point it's going to come to a stop and we want it to do it in a you know um, not too far we don't want it to roll forever so let's see what happens when we save the scene and then play it okay alright so 
you can see it doesn't roll as far as it rolled before and now it's finally gone gray which means that the auto auto idle just kicked in so it did take a while it looked like the ball was kind of at rest for a little bit before it kicked over so you know what I'm gonna do rather than play around with it some more I'm actually going to go with the settings I had before because I like I said I don't understand exactly how they work I think it's one of those things where you could just have to play with it and get the settings that you want what I did is I set the angular angular threshold here to one and then for the dampening I left the linear dampening as it was so let's put that back um, and you know now that I think about it I probably didn't want to to mess with the linear dampening just because as the ball is flying through the level I don't want there to be you know linear dampening you can think of as maybe the friction um, you know I don't I don't want as the ball is flying through the air I don't want it slowing down quite a bit we want it to be able to travel pretty far so that um, you know we can make it to the end of the level but the rotation if it's on a surface and it's rotating we want that rotation to dampen quite a bit so that it, maybe it'll come to rest quicker so that's what I had. I had it set to all ones. Let's go to scene. Let's hit save. Let's stop, reload the scene, hit play, push our button. So it rolls for a little bit and comes to a stop pretty quick. So you'll see that it, as it's actually moving, we don't want it to come to a stop, but when it seems to come to a stop, then it goes into auto idle. So that seems to be good. So let's leave it at that. Um, now one thing that you'll notice is that, um, let's restart, I can keep hitting the, the mouse button and it's going to keep adding speed to it. So that's one thing that we don't want to have in our game. So let's fix that first. So let's go into code. We're going to load the ball AI because we're talking about the behavior of the ball. And let's add a couple of variables here that are going to help us out. One thing that we want to do is we want to know whether or not the ball is actually in play. Um, so let's add a boolean, and we're going to call this one uh, in in play. And we're going to start off with false because when the ball gets loaded into the game, it's not actually in play; it's ready to be launched. So we'll add the b in play and on in it. So when this ball comes into existence, there's a couple of things I want to do. First of all, I want to actually disable the dynamics. So we go into deny dynamics and then this is under enable. So it's enable dynamics. And if you recall from before, we had actually set um, one of the variables to be a handle to the ball. So as you can see, this function is asking for an, a handle to the object that we're talking about. So we're going to make the call by doing this dot h ball comma and then this is a boolean value of whether or not it's enabled we're going to say false now the reason why I want to do this and you'll see here pretty quick what will happen let's I hit control s to save f7 to compile let's go back over and actually let me show you something that's what I like to do sometimes is here if I'm just doing quick edits in the code and I just want to see how that's reacting um, down here in this bottom corner what I'll do is pull up the scene viewer and then I can just run it in this little window. So you can see the ball is gray right off the bat. It may be hard to see but um, you know it is it is um, gray as, as opposed to the green which means that it's not active right now. So when I loaded the ball in um, I've started the scene so instead of dropping to the ground it's actually just waiting. Um, which is what I want it to do because rather than just dropping to the ground I want it to wait for our button click and then launch. So now that I've done that let's go ahead and come in here and we'll say that whenever we click the mouse button down we are going to make a call to the dynamics before we try to add a force to it and we are going to enable dynamics so it was this dot H ball and this time we're going to do true. We'll save it.